Well, as they say in Russian, посмотрим, что будет. Or also, посмотрим, что есть. Um, let's take a look at Sir Isaac Newton. Lex one. Corpus omne persevere in satu soco sendi viramovendi un formator in directum nisi quatenus a verbus impressis cagitur satum ulumutare. Uh, Newton's first law. My Latin is a little rusty. Rusty. Um, everybody persists in a state of being at rest or moving uniformly, straightforward, except in a so far and is compelled to change its state by a force impressed. Um, I'll do a couple, uh, three videos here. By the way, this is copyright uh, 2015, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. I'm a field theorist, first and foremost. Well, first and foremostly, I'm a, I'm a Greek and uh, Prakrit translator, um, but uh, also a field theorist. Um, so, now, Tesla himself has said that Newton is a little bit wacko on his laws, and nobody can blame Newton. I mean, he meant very well. Uh, however, it is the case, 80% of Newton's writings basically haven't made the light of day, because, well, science doesn't like that, because a lot of his writings were alchemical in nature and uh, basically metaphysical. But all the world's greatest science throughout uh, history, scientists throughout history, have all been first and foremostly metaphysicians. They're only interested in science in as far as the sake of uh, comprehending the empirical universe because it is an ancient and true law that, you know, science and metaphysics or physics and metaphysics are, you know, either side of the same coin. It is only our sick and demented uh, modern society that thinks that, you know, uh, metaphysics, not meaning in the New Age sense, but in the true Platonic sense, and science are two different things, and you know, that sort of notion is absolutely uh, platonic heresy. But, uh, as is the case, Sir Isaac Newton gets his three laws wrong. Walter Russell actually makes an extremely astute observation, a long list of them, where uh, Isaac Newton is wrong. And Isaac Newton himself never defined gravity. He didn't know what it was, and he knew there was instantaneous action at a distance. But, as pertaining to uh, Newton's first law, so far as everybody persisting in a state of being at rest, are moving uniformly straightforward. This is all untrue. I'll we'll go over a Newton's second law here in a little little bit, or third law, depending on what time I have uh, in this video and the next. This is a lie, since no body is ever at rest uh, as pertains itself. You know, this is always a mass that's incredibly moving atomic vortices, and that any body are moving in some curved linear fashion towards decreasing motion and increasing acceleration. Now, that, that's kind of beyond uh, current uh, conceptual understanding. When we think of acceleration, we think of applying force by like releasing gas, which is an explosion which causes acceleration down the road, but we're talking about actual field acceleration, which is always decreasing motion. And uh, that sort of thing isn't taught in modern day schools, either in the United States or anywhere else, but I mean, that is a necessity that dictates field mechanics. You know, they're always moving towards increasing acceleration, towards higher inertial states, um, proximal to other bodies. When motion ceases, you know, the body also ceases to exist. Someone say, well, you know, there's no motion going on with this apple sitting here. Well, no, I mean, at the atomic scale and uh, further still, there is incredible kinetic motion going on. When motion actually ceases, in the absolutest sense, this apple would completely vanish, as well as any other phenomena in the universe. So the notion of ceased motion is an absolute heresy as so far as uh, Newton is concerned. His three laws are are generally accurate, but they are intrinsically extremely inaccurate because when motion ceases, the body also ceases to exist. All bodies are motions of force, a loss of inertia and conglomeration, or what we know, what I have referred to as dielectric condensates or atomic matter you know, at the elemental scale. If Newton had sat underneath the apple tree for long enough, for example, he would have seen that the fallen apple would have risen upwards to the sky as decay took place and taken its course. You know, as the water molecules are escaping gases from the decay and the fungus and whatnot, and, you know, worms farting from eating the apple. I mean, <laughs> all the, he would have actually seen over time, of course. Uh, time, of course, is another... Uh, empirical being conceptual flaw that we've actually reified 
It's called uh, fallacy of attribute reification, but given enough time, Newton would have seen the fallen apple eventually rise to the skywards, uh, you know, drift off uh, into space in the atmosphere, and he also would have seen the heavier matter of the apple, you know, sink into the ground, like the seeds. So the fallen apple would have actually diverged. Nature only has one line. We think of a line as a human. There's a point, and there's a line, or there's a point, and there's a line. But Mother Nature only knows how to make a line one way. And, of course, there's no such thing as a point, and there's no such thing as a line. There's only a point line. But Mother Nature's line only exists like this, or like this. doesn't matter where you start. The starting point is always the point of a phenomenalization, where appearance starts, manifestation. We start from the unmanifest, and we diverge uh, centrifugally to the manifest. So, yeah, Mother Nature only, you know, using Mother Nature in the uh, general sense, of course, I don't care what you refer to, but Mother Nature only knows how to make a line like this. There's no so Humans think of a line like this. Okay, there we have a line. Okay, we start at one point, we make a line. Mother Nature can't make lines that way. Mother Nature only makes lines like this. Okay? If you understand that fact, then you're really, really close to having a deep understanding <laughs> of genuine field mechanics and how the cosmos actually works, because that's the only way a line exists. As is the case with the fallen apple, it would have diverged both vertically and uh, down into the earth, given enough time. But human beings, since we're not going to sit underneath an apple tree for three weeks staring at a fallen apple, we think, well, the apple's fallen. It's like, well, no, it's, it has accelerated and decreasing motion. It's reached a pressure state that's closer to its gravitational uh, maximum acceleration, closest towards the earth, but given enough time, it will actually diverge from there. There are no straight lines in the universe. Everything in the universe follows a curved linear line. There's something else that doesn't exist in Mother Nature is that there's not one single straight line in the universe. That's also why underneath the ferrocell, cell, you will not see the most fundamental principle of the universe being magnetism. Magnetism only extrapolates itself out in a hypertrochoidal processional pattern. People think, what's a hypertrochoid? And we have to say, what's well, a spirograph-like pattern? It's actually infinite uh, reciprocating uh, circles that are actually diverging off the central uh, inertial plane. And you can also see that in the center of any magnet. But where Newton is additionally wrong is that, you know, there's not a single straight line in the universe, as I said, and such, and such, such that this statement, i.e. the first law of uh, Newton, is absolutely impossible. It can't exist. There exist no bodies at rest in the entire universe. Uh, even uh, a used piece of chewing gum sitting on a table, if it were to release its incredible motive and kinetic speeds uh, given to it by the rotating Earth and the Earth around the Sun and the internal kinetic uh, uh, energy uh, forces, actually not accelerations, but forces within the atomic scale of a piece of chewing gum, if that kinetic energy making up its atomic structure and have that combined uh, supposed resting body, be it an apple or a hunk of chewing gum, you know, were to be fully released instantaneously, the sum of the kinetic forces, both uh, internally and as applied to it, as it's hurtling um, hundreds of thousands of miles through the cosmos, were to be instantly released in an omnidirectional pattern, you know, the power would be enough to create an explosion leaving a crater as deep as the ocean. So we can never talk about uh, bodies at rest because this, they, they don't exist. The body being a phenomenal and existential conglomeration of dielectric condensates that we deem elementals and of course building upon that molecules and eventually masses with magnitudes that move in space and time. But space and time are unrealities. I mean we have to understand what the Poincaré disk model is and understand that uh, these are attributional reifications of something that doesn't exist in principa. You know, there is, uh, there is innately within field mechanics the absolutist platonic truth that uh, there, is, uh, there is no uh, original cause. You know, uh, the Christians would call it original sin. There is nothing to point to as an original cause. It is only the attributional side of a principle that we're referring to. That's too complex for people to understand, but it's absolutely divinely simplex. No body is ever compelled to change, rather it's perpetually in a state of flux and change in the curved linear avoidance of its imparted forces to dissipate that force in a null zero of maximum inertia, at which time the body does not rest, but rather ceases to exist. 
not in the sense of non-existence in the nihilistic sense of nihil ex nihilo, uh, or in the absolutist sense we've actually given principal denotation of nothing or absence or non-existence as something itself, but rather what we're referring to in the true sense of uh, field mechanics and general platonics as unmanifest, that the absolute total uh, loss of uh, both that acceleration and the motion that comprises any phenomenal body, we're talking about the cessation of presence because there's no such thing as a body at rest because this is merely a nominal empirical observation over a given limited, extremely limited time frame in which we're to say something isn't moving, it's a, it is a body at rest. Uh, you can actually go on and on, and actually even uh, the first law of uh, Sir Isaac Newton is fundamentally flawed. It's an error. This isn't my position, or my belief, or my affirmation, or my opinion. Um, Platonists aren't interested in doxa, or opinions, they're actually interested in facts, and so am I. A true Platonic truth seeker is extremely rare, but Newton is fundamentally wrong on his three laws, and I'm certainly far from the first person to say this. And uh, Anyway, that's uh, covering uh, Newton's first law, and uh, next we'll be covering uh, Newton's third law, which actually contains you know, the most heinous, most egregious, uh, shall we say, trespassings against uh, intellectual sovereignty, or, uh, or uh, shall we say, uh, simplicity of vision as pertains to wisdom. Lux veritas. Check out the next video proving that Newton's uh, three laws are incorrect. Thank you.